Hello. I just finished one about a week ago now, probably two weeks ago, I read this book. The Thousand Year Old Boy by Ross Welford, who I'd not heard of before, but um, has written another couple of books on the back as well. What Not to Do If You Turn Invisible and Time Travelling with a Hamster. So he writes books for children, I guess, but I read the back of this. There are lots of stories about people who want to live forever. This is not one of those stories. This is a story about someone who wants to stop. Nice twist. I thought, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, realistically, who wants to live forever? If, you know, all your friends died and everything changed all the time and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, this looks like a good story. And also, um, I've never read something by this person before, so it might be good. It's actually really, really good. The It's told from the point of view of a few different characters. So you've got the boy who's a thousand years old. You've got his mum. He has a recollection of his dad who died in a... Um, when, when he was young um, and it's about this kid who's been around forever like a thousand years trying to fit into a normal society and how he's got by until then what his mum calls uh, hiding in plain sight um, because now you've got the internet now you can search everything you can go on ancestry.com and everything and so there's three main characters well yeah three real main characters if you just include the kids it's about how the kid joined the school, how it is at the school, he actually wants to stop being young forever because it tells the story of how as he was growing up he made friends then they abandoned him because he was the weird kid who never grew up and everything else. Really well told, there's a cat in there if you like cats. Um, I like the way the author paints scenes as well. You know, it's, it's one of these guys where you read the stuff and it really feels like you're actually there, you can imagine it happening. You feel sorry for the characters. Um, and, and the characters are built up well. I think what's really important in stories is you don't just have a plot, you don't just have a setting. The story is all about who is the character, what is the character trying to solve, why is the character like that, what's the backstory. I thought this, and, and recently I read a book about it as well, which confirms it. You know, an actual professor of literature agrees with me. <laughs> um, really good book. Got some historical references in there. I mean, imagine being this kid, 11 years old, and you go to a history lesson in school, you've never really been to school before, and the teacher starts talking about history, and you're thinking, oh my god, they're getting it all wrong, actually, it was this action. It's really funny, it's really well told, you feel for the kids, you feel for the characters, you root for the main character, which is what's important, you have to empathise with them. So, I'm not talking so much about the story here, as the craft of story writing, I guess, that's because of another book I read, um, which I'll do a review on in a bit, but this was really enjoyable. Um, the reason I read this book was because uh, I think my wife came up with the idea of all of us reading the same book, uh, our daughters and myself and my wife, and then we could discuss the book. So the girls kind of helped to choose this. Um, I've read it and, and they're reading it now, so it's really enjoyable. I think they'll all like it. Living Forever is not all it's cracked up to be, damn right. Um, I'll read you the blurb on the back and then I'll recommend this book. Very enjoyable. It's only about 400 pages, so you know, if you're a fast reader, you can probably get through it in a few days. Um, Alfie Monk is like any other nearly teenage boy, except he's a thousand years old and can remember living and can remember the last Viking invasion of England. So when everything Alfie knows and loves is destroyed in the fire and the modern world comes crashing in, Alfie embarks on a mission to find friendship, acceptance, and a different way to live, which means finding a way to make sure he will eventually die. I love this book actually. Um, it's nice when you pick up something that you wouldn't otherwise have picked up. That's why I like it when other people suggest books. And once again, I'll recommend learning to speed read because if somebody, before I knew how to speed read, if someone had suggested this book to me, I'd go, oh my god, 410 pages. When am I going to find time to read that? Now it doesn't matter. You can suggest a book to me 100 pages, 1,000 pages. I'll get for it eventually. You know, I'll probably do about 150 pages an hour or so. Very enjoyable, very well thought out, interesting plot, recommend it, 8 out of 10. It seems like I always give really high marks for books, but then I enjoy reading, and if a book's really bad, I'll probably get halfway through or whatever, and think, uh, leave it, if it's really bad, but there you go. Maybe one day I'll review a book and give it 5 out of 10 or 2 out of 10, but why would I have Bob finish reading it, I don't know. Anyway, The Thousand Year Old Boy by Ross Welford, a wonderful story. Um according to Karen Millwood Hargrave, author of The Girl of Ink and Stars. Check it out.